The National Secretary of the Miyeti Ala Al Hassan Saleh said it is wrong to drive herders out of any part of the country, adding that if there were criminals among them, it's the responsibility of the government to identify and arrest them. Now, previously, the Ondo State Governor, Rotimi Akiridolu, had asked all Fulani herdsmen to vacate the forest reserves in the state, issuing a seven-day ultimatum to the effect. The governor gave the order at a meeting with leaders of the House of Fulani and Ibira communities in the state, saying that the activities of these herdsmen had long been causing a threat to security in the state. Now, joining us to have this conversation is National Secretary Pandef, Mr. Ken Robinson, and political analyst Biodo Shoumi. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. It's my pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. All right. Now, let's start with what, um, what's what been happening, especially what happened over the weekend. There seemed to be um, some trouble here in Lagos, some trouble in uh, Shasha, and of course, you know what's been happening in Ogun and Ondo State. Um, there have been several opinions on as to how these farmers versus herders uh, situation uh, sh can be handled. Um, but now, Governor Kowa of Delta State is saying that Nigerians should rise up against open grazing uh, in the country. Is this something that we can all line up behind? How how re realizable is this? How walkable is it? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken Robinson, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Kindly call me again with what you asked. So it. I'm saying that yeah, there. I had an interruption. Someone was trying to call me, so I didn't get what you asked. Okay, so there are people who have come up with different opinions as to how to deal with the farmer versus herders crisis in the country. But then Governor Kowa of Delta State has said that um, Nigerians have to stand up against open grazing. And I'm asking, is this going to be a solution, a long-term solution to the problem? And is this something that we can line up? Behind? Oh, oh, definitely, absolutely right. The governor is correct. Um, we've continued to say that open grazing is outdated, is archaic, and that it will continue to occasion crisis if allowed in a modern society like ours. And uh, that um, cattle breeding is, is a business, a private enterprise. And so those who are involved should and they were to buy land and, and, and establish ranches. That's what we're continuing to say. Open grazing cannot uh, exist in a society like ours. And so the governor is right, and, and that the, the sustainable solution that will bring about lasting peace uh, is, 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 is establishment of ranches, and open grazing should be outlawed and prohibited by all governments at all states. And, and we continue to call this crisis farmers' headers crisis. It's not farmers' headers crisis. It's a group of armed persons, the parading as uh, head of men, terrorizing citizens of Nigeria, molesting women, destroying livelihoods, and, 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 and all, all manner of criminality. So, so we shouldn't tag it as a farmer's head crisis. It is a group of criminals. And the, the, the high time we consider it in that light, the better for the country. They are not headers, they are not head men, they are criminals, they are maruders. In fact, they are terrorists that are undermining the stability and security of Nigeria. And, and that Nigeria is at the threshold of a monumental crisis in this matter is continuing to be handled with key blows that the government has been doing over the years. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Biodo Shomi, an Ogun State monarch uh, had said that if the state and the federal government does not handle the situation with the herders versus the farmers, uh, that they will be forced to protect themselves. Uh, what do you make of this statement? Is this a call for disorderliness? Uh, Is this a call to take laws into their hands, especially with what happened in Shasha over the weekend? Oh, yeah. What you see um, is that the statement of the monarch coming from a paramount ruler of um, Egbado, um, the Ulu of Ilaro, it clearly underlines the seriousness of the situation on one part, 
the helplessness of the security services on the another hand, and also on another hand, the desire of the people to protect themselves. The primary duty of every government, whether at state, federal, or local government level, is to protect lives and properties. We have found ourselves in a situation where people are feeling unsafe in their own land, in their own country, in their own town, in their villages. Now, what is government response to it? I am not one of those who would think that the government is not doing anything about it. I think the government is caught in the trap. What do you do in this situation? You have a situation where uh, the headsmen who are mostly Fulani have been able to portray themselves, you know, through a kind of what, what you call them, um, I want to call it um, cow mentality, you know, heads mentality, heads mentality, where they do not condemn crimes being committed by individual criminal Fulani headsmen. And therefore, they rise in defense of every people, you know, anyone trying to defend themselves against their own properties. So this is the problem. And then people are forced into collectivizing the crimes being committed by individual or a group of headsmen. But, but, me, but Mieti Allah no has come out to say, to describe say, it, Mr. Other than me, to give it a label. Mr. Show me, Mieti Allah has said succinctly that it is not their job to do the fishing out of these so-called marauders or these people who are hiding under the guise of cattle rarers or herders to commit crime. Are they wrong? I mean, shouldn't that be the place of government and security agencies to deal with these people? But then there are people who have a school of thought that if you are um, observant enough, you would be able to tell when people who are doing stuff, hiding under your name are doing it, then you should be able to point them out or finger them if they are those who live among you. Yes, the Mieti Allah is right. I read the statement of the secretary. It is not their business to fish out those who are perpetrating crimes. It is the business of the Nigerian police force or the security agencies in the country. Um, Mieti Allah is right on that. But on another score, you ask a question. If it is not their business, you know, to fish out criminals, why are they defending criminal headsmen? Headsmen kidnapping people, killing the wives of people, you know, killing children, you know, kidnapping. Why are they defending them? They always rush to defend those apprehended or those accused of those crimes. So this is the contradiction for me. If I am, if I'm, I'm in a position to advise the Mieti Allah spokesperson, they need not drag themselves into this issue. Uh -huh. They should allow the security agencies to do their job or the different agencies like Amotekun or any other security outfit lawfully created by law, you know, to fish out the criminals. They do not need to keep collectivizing any attempt to arrest a Fulani headsman who has committed or suspected of committing crime and then claiming that they are harassing all Fulani to lead Southwest. No, okay. that is not the case. It's the criminals that if the state is unable to apprehend them and process them through the criminal justice system, those are the people, the, um, the vigilantes, the Amoteco cops, you know, are saying that, look, we will apprehend these people and get them out of our own territory. Okay. I want to go back to... Um Mr. Ken Robinson. Now, um, there was a war of words over the weekend between um, Governor Lalong and the Bauchi State Governor about, you know, why these so-called herders have decided to arm themselves. And cer certain people uh, feel like he was making a case uh, for the carrying of arms. And although his um, aide has come out to say that he was stated or he was quoted out of context, but then um, the... Nigeria Immigration Service boss had come out to say that he's gone across the country and has never seen uh, a cattle herder carrying an AK-47. Well, and this didn't sit well with you, Pande, for Afeni Fere and the rest of the people who um, reacted to this issue. Uh, what did, does the government need to do in this instance? Because it looks like this issue just keeps 
changing its form and its nature, but then it's heating up day by day. What has to be done in the interim to deal with this issue so that it does not get out of hand uh, in the coming future? As you rightly uh, said, uh, those reports, and then there is there's a report on, also on your screen right now that we are saying nobody can force us out of uh, Southwest. When we see this kind of inconsistencies and uh, very audacious statements from, from ATL and from even the governors, a few days ago, uh, they, we, we got a report that Northern Governors Forum like that, Open Grazing, acknowledged that Open Grazing was, was, was not sustainable in, in Nigeria, in today's Nigeria which we applauded. And then the next day, uh, Governor Bala Mohamed of Baushu State um, saying that, uh, giving reasons for, for S-Men carrying AK-47. And then we said, then every Nigerian businessman should carry AK-47 around. And then it, it leads to the collapse of governance. And, and then it becomes anarchy because everybody will have to protect himself. And that's where we are going. And it's high time the Nigerian government sits up, as we have said before, and stop this, 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 this attachment and this, this uh, romance with, with, with criminals. For whatever reason it is, we, we know that elders uh, 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 are mostly Fulani, Fulanese. And, but some have said they are not Nigerians, they are foreigners coming into... Why are we allowing foreigners to threaten the corporate existence of Nigeria, for God's sake? Why are we doing this to Nigeria? If we love this country, everyone in this country, whether you're from the far east, far west, far, far north, or wherever, you must speak against what is going on. Mm -hmm. that a group of people are terrorizing the country, okay. making life unbearable in Nigeria. People can no longer go freely out anywhere. So, so the, the statements uh, by, by the Nigerian Immigration Service, by the governor of Bashu State, are complete... Uh, um, I, don't want, I want to be careful with the words I use, but they are playing on the sensibilities of Nigerians and it's unfortunate. Well, I want to thank you very much. Biodo Shoumi is a political analyst and uh, Ken Robinson is the National Secretary of PANDEF. Thank you, gentlemen. Hopefully, uh, there should be an end in sight and government will hopefully uh, deal so with this Sorry, National issue. Publicity Secretary. Please. You are the National Publicity Secretary of PANDEF. All right. Thank you very Publicity much, Secretary. gentlemen, thank you. for joining us. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. Stay with us. Well, here's my take. There's been so much talk about the recent insecurity in the country. Everywhere you turn, there's one form of crisis or the other. It almost seems like they're, they're picking up steam, you know, all of these issues, because no one is really addressing them and doing the needful to deal with the root cause of the crisis. What we have now, according to former President Ulusha Gwabasanjo, is a keg of gunpowder. We must shun all forms of sentiment and deal decisively with these pockets of violence. We cannot afford to let them get out of hand. This is not the time to walk on eggshells on issues such as this. Uh, not, not the time to put the plaster all over the cancer. Treat the problem. Again, the Lekki Toll Plaza has left a sour taste in the mouth of Nigerians and all those who seek for justice. With humans being treated like sardines and their human rights stripped from them, is this really the way to go? Is, this, is there no more value for Nigerians by its government? Do we no longer have a voice in this country? I mean, really, how the mighty have fallen. It, this is a new law for us, and it's quite unfortunate. But the question is, where do we go from here? I'm Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.